everybody, and welcome to our final segment. This is it. Oh my God, of our Magic 2013 review. I am Evan Irwin. I am not Evan Irwin. He's not. All day. All day. We're here talking about the green cards and the gold cards and the artifacts and some lands. We're talking about all of it. All of it. The whole. We're almost done. Caboodle. Well, let's get into it. Let's do it. Acidic Slime Returns. Yes. I love Acidic Slime. Acidic Slime is a very good magic card. Just such a sweet, like, when you put Creepy Mold on a Duder guy and you give a Death Touch. I love it. Just death, love it. death Touch is something that's coming back a lot, and I love it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's a great, great ability. We'll get to the other creatures that have it, but Acidic Slime's always been good. It has this, you don't know if it's that good and limited, but it always does something that you didn't think it was going to do. Like, it always is a two for one, and mm -hmm. it's really good. Sometimes you get there, like... Their one swamp, four island draw, or... Right, or you kill their Oblivion Ring that got rid of your awesome creature guy, or whatever it is, or their stupid yeah. artifact, like a trading post. Yeah, and, very good. You know, it just, it just does stuff. Does stuff. Awesome. Love it. And we have Arbor I Elf. didn't even hear that I was talking while you said that. Stop it. We haven't even got to talk about <laughs> didn't even say it. You didn't even notice All it. right. Arbor Elf means that Lanor Elf is not here. It's because we're going to be producing... Other colors than green. Oh, with this guy. it's going to be untapping a forest, not a basic forest, but yeah. a forest card, as they sometimes say. You can get by temple gardens. And yeah, man, I'm so excited about that. So Arbor Elf just fits right into all those decks, and should be doing good things. Yeah, it's a great mana accelerator. Uh, I'm glad that it's Arbor Elf now and not well, Lanor. Well, right, well, the thing I thought was interesting is that Wizards actually doesn't really like Lanor Elves because it's plural. Yeah. It's one dude, but it's a plural yeah. name, which is really awkward, but it's so iconic. Yeah. You don't want to just get rid of Land War Elves. It's too sweet, and Arbor Elf is right there. Now, Bond Beetle, it reminds me of almost like a, a Simic creature. Like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Simic creatures from Ravnica came in with counters on them, and you could move the counters around, and that was sort of like the guild's thing. That guild's yes. thing was all about the counters, and this guy just feels like would go right into the Simic sort of, you know, guild. Yeah. It's a little bit weaker than the one that came out in the last set. That's a 1-1 one, one for 2 that puts a counter on it. Mm -hmm. But I could see this card being good because it, I think it fits well with Exalted. Like, if you're just attacking with that one guy anyway, you can, mm -hmm. like, give that creature a bonus. Yeah. Uh, it's a 1-2 on its own, and it just fits this theme of Wizards really working hard to make one-drops matter. Yeah. So it can, give a, it can sacrifice its power to make something else bigger. And I love that. I love yeah. the, 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 I mean, because they really have to get clever to make one drops not mm -hmm. just completely irrelevant. I mean, Merfolk with the Pearl Trident aside, you know, like they gave that a lord. So, yeah. da, da, da. But Bond Beetle is totally sweet. Mm -hmm. Boundless Realms, you go just get all the lands. Get all the but lands. But why did this one be basic lands? Why couldn't it, like. Aww. I don't know. Well, does it, it matter? Like, once well, you hit seven mana for a ramp spell, like. Right. Yeah, like once you have all that mana, what are you doing? Yeah, you're so greedy. Casting Omni Science. Ah, ah, damn Omni Sciences. I mean, look, dude, like I, you're at seven mana. I guess you want yeah, 14, fourteen and go. I Ooh. mean, is this the just the ramp to the Emberquills? Like, this is just the yeah. easiest way to get there. This is the go on with your bad self sorcery. Yeah. I mean, it would be fun to have all the lands, like mm, to right. have that much in play. Totally sweet. Do, would you actually play that card in Limited at all? No. Because that card seems really would, bad. I don't well, even like could, seven drops in Limited, not one that doesn't even do anything. Well, I know. I'm just saying, like, that would be a way to get all of your land out and then play Bountiful Harvest. <gasps> I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. Transitions. You gain one life for each land. Card is bad, but it's okay because this is a teacher. These cards teach you that these cards are bad. Because you're going to play this card and you're going to be like, oh snap, I'm totally going to gain like eight life off my like sick, you know, land flooded mm -hmm. draw, blah, blah, blah. And then your opponent goes, okay, attack you for eight life and you did nothing. And so then you go, man, that card doesn't work the way I wanted it to. Yeah. It's one of those cards that needs to exist. Just to help people jump ahead? Yeah. Well, if you've never played with it but you were questioning it, it sucks. You heard <laughs> this from me, Brad Nelson. Officially stinks. Now, Centaur Corsair doesn't suck. No, this is a perfect magic card. A three, three, three for three in green. No other color gets this effect. Yep. It's just great. Like, I love that this is the green three drop. This is the highest you can get on the common level. Yep. Uh, there's a couple cards that break the rules, kind of like the knight that gives a, a one And the spider will get two is insane. Yeah. But, yeah, like, Centaur Corsair is, for me, just a terrifically awesome green card. Yes. It communicates all the things. It's not, like, Trained Armadon 
and its ilk um, are sort of where this car came from. But those mm -hmm. cars needed green, green in a colorless versus a green. And that was a colors. little. It's a little. It's just rough. not necessary. Yeah, in in limited is just not. It's not necessary in like in limited or con certainly not constructed. No one's really playing it. But you know, there was a period of time yeah. in which gnarled mass yep. was a thing, because that was all you had in terms of a three drop. But Deadly Recluse, I just, whoa, this is a sweet spider. I, I love Deadly Recluse. This is a reprint, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the last set it was in, but like this. World Wake, I think? Yeah, this felt so good playing it in Limited. I had three of them in my pool. Oh, man. And it just felt like. The card's a boss. It felt like you just set up traps while you retreat. You're like, for the first couple turns, you're just like putting these death touch spiders into play, and your opponent's just like, well, it's going to trade with something. All right, I guess I'll take. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll block, you know? Might I'll as kill, well. I'll kill that. I mean, and set up the game to a point where you just like get ahead. And I, I just love that this guy exists to do so. Like, turn two, playing a reach guy that's going to kill any flyer. Just awesome. He's one of my favorite cards in the set. And that's because when those white blue decks, like they're just convinced that all their flyers are going to be able to do all this cool mm -hmm. stuff. And you're like, nope, little dorky spider that's just going to drive you insane. I will block with my spider. And you're like, oh, God, i got to use my unsummon on the stupid spider. <laughs> I get a little hit, and then you replay the spider, and yep. they feel terrible. And then there's a Duffdale worm because rawr. Because it is huge and trampoly and a seven man, a seven, seven. Seven man, a seven, seven. Well, well, I'll be. Jeez. Hell far. That card is huge. Yeah. That card it, is ridiculous. It is a big monster that you can end the curve with, and it does a lot of good things, and you're probably not going to play it all the time because seven mana is a lot of mana. Seven mana is a ton of mana and limited. Never going to hit constructed, but that's not why this card exists. You know, it exists because we need big creatures. Because we don't have enough seven sevens for sevens in this set. With seven seven? Seven 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 seven. Seven seven seven. Seven, seven. I don't know. I like that stuff. It's, it's a very cool. good card. Speaking of worms that are sevens with seven sevens all seven, over them. Seven sevens. Elder scale, elder, elder scale, elder scale. It's just elder scale everywhere. All the sevens. How many sevens does it have? It has eight. That's not cool, wizards. Really? <laughs> you couldn't, for real, like, they couldn't notice the set number. Wizards, I mean, I know you misspelled pathetic and that's okay, but come on, guys. You... This was the whole point of the friggin' card that it only had seven sevens on it and you couldn't check the collector number. I mean, come on. And then someone's gonna be like, well, we couldn't think of a better name. And whatever, come, really? Guy snatch, huh? Get you some of that. Like, Guy snatch. Exactly. Like, give me a break. This is ridiculous. This is like one of those where they were so close, they were right there. To perfection? Mm hmm. So close, man. Oh, cool. Just whatever. We've already talked about it. It's I honestly card. don't even think they even thought about the seven sevens. That is incorrect. Really? That they much, actually did? I would absolutely, you know, bet things on that they know. I mean, like, they stare at these cards for months and months, and, like, right at the end, they, they misspell pathetic. I mean, Elvish Archdruid is a reprint. Of a reprint, of a reprint, of a reprint. It's, of just a been, reprint. it's been here forever. I it's think people love it. I think that, lords. Yeah, I think this card is must be like a super casual card that just like pumps out. I think everyone yeah. plays with the card. Absolutely. I mean, the first deck I ever had was an elf deck, so I think everyone's first deck is an elf deck, and this is a good one. Like I was just well wishing. I wasn't casting huge fatties with my green. I would love to see Imperius Perfect come back. No, oh, card is sweet. Too good. Too good. Limited all star, two bomb, big, scary cool. card. It's a crazy, really good uh, yeah. limit. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I like, I think if Archdruid's it came back, nice. it would be a rare. It, I agree. But yeah. it's also one of those things where it's like, it doesn't really gum up the board. And this guy, you know, Elvish Archdrew doesn't really gum up the board. And he's like a very simple, straightforward mm -hmm. thing. And he's an Elf Lord, you know, where like he the does help perfect cast guys and does stuff. He does help cast fatties and limited. Um, but if you don't have them, then you can't cast the fatty sometimes, so your deck's designed that way. It kind of like, sucks. There's like elf ball decks and standard and stuff, and he's kind of cute. Oh, yeah, he's great. Like, I. He's a cool card. Elvish Visionary, however, I like drawing cards. Yeah. Yeah, this card is fun. you. I mean, maybe there's some kind of elf deck, maybe first for the next three months. We still have the El. whatever, the Regenerate Trample guy. Regenerate Trample guy? Yeah. He's the guy from Scars of Meriden that's rotating out. Oh, yeah. He's like the 2 2 for, yeah, that everyone forgot about. <laughs> you know, that yeah. guy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he regenerates, gives your team fireball effect. Yeah. I mean, Elvish Visionary, like a card drawing elf, wasn't around. Maybe. We, we also have Lander Elf and Arbor Elf. Yes, we do. There's all sorts of elves, don't get me wrong. There's certainly an elf deck to be made if Ooh, you would the like four to four make one. Oh, the 4 Flash Elf. Yeah, Yeva, we're getting to her. She's sweet. 
But Elvis Visionary, love this guy. Yes. Love him in Limited. I just love how you can always play him and you always feel good about it. Mm -hmm. And he gets you a card and he trades so you don't take a bunch of damage from some fatty. I mean, just terrific. Yes, very good card. <coughs> My worst <coughs> enemy in Limited or in Legacy when I play against that deck. Right. I play it and I bounce it and I play it and I bounce it and I and play so it. So Wizards is just like waving the flag right here yep. with Farseek. And it's just like, Fetch land or shock lands will be coming back. Yes. Shock lands are coming. Yeah, like some people are like, what if they're just trolling us? I'm like, they're in the business to make money. They would not just troll us. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're not, I mean, yes, they could, but like, come on, guys. Yeah. We're going back to Ravnica. We have Arbor Elf. We have Farseek. We have some more we're going to be looking at. Yes, like, they are coming back. Shocklands are back. Shocklands are coming back. Prices and that, are starting to go down on them. Like, and then, no, and then they go, oh, sorry, guys, we didn't make Shocklands. We made Duel Lands! <laughs> but, yeah, man, if they do duels, finally, just, oh, God, please. It would be so sweet. Just snow duels. Like, they would probably have to yeah. do snow duels. But, you know, like, maybe Ravnica is in, like, a wintry mix. Tree folk vampires yeah. and snow land. Yeah. What return what? to Rev... Today, the forecast is a wintry mix of... Uh, this is a return to Ravnica, not to an alternate but dimension. it's a little sleety, and uh, stay away from the vampire tree folk. <laughs> Far seek it sweet and flint hoof bore is rock. I mean, they gave us back Watch Wolf. This yeah. is a sick Watch Wolf. Smokey the Bear did not teach him how to treat no. the forest. No, he did not treat he it right. He just doesn't care. It just rawr. it it sniffs out the panicked and confused. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever smelled confusion, but it stinks. God, it reeks in here. What's going on? Ugh. Man, weird. All right. Anyway, so. What I love about this card is that it is a Watch Wolf, two mana, three, three, yes. essentially. And when you have three mana, it's going to be running into the red zone, yeah. which is totally awesome. And is still great and limited. Like, it's still going to be a, you know, a good surprise. I mean, it's a good bear, right? It's a fantastic bear. Yeah, and if you ever just have a mountain in your deck, it gets better. Like, you're going to play this in non-mountain non decks. Maybe you're not going to like to, but it's still just a bear. It's a good card. It's a bear. It's the curve. It's in the red zone. I like bears. It's a terrific card. Fog is sweet. Because I like the, 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 mm. the word. I like, you know, the name of the card. I like the effect. I like the art. I like how it, you know, it exists and it makes perfect sense. Another Conley Woods story. I beat Conley Woods with this at a pro tour. Oh, yeah. Fogged him. He was like, bro. And he was like, mm -hmm. nope. No, the card is very playable. People mis-evaluate, especially with overrun effects and racing situations. The card is playable. Like, there's... There's a lot of worse things you could be doing than preventing your opponent from killing you. <laughs> right. Well, this is the sort of card where I think, you know, new players can be really enticed by the gain life cards, but they can be sort of, they can sort of ignore the fact that this card is doing way more than gaining you life. Are you it kidding? Is gaining you new, turns. Like no, it is. new players love Fog. They, new players overplay Fog. They may overvalue I get, it. I have gotten Fogged in every round one of a... SCG draft open I've ever played in. Wow. I've been fogged or moon misted or crippled or whatever. New players love fog, and for some reason I run into the guy like, hi, I've never played one of these before, and I'm like, hi, I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> I don't say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to. No. That's the thing. Well, look, if they love it or they don't love it, all I'm saying is, like, I, I love the card and I'm yeah. glad that we have it still. Fungal sprouting. That's a cool card. I really liked it right when I saw it, but then I realized that just a bunch of 1-1s one on the ground isn't what Green really wants. It's not what Green really wants, but, I mean, you know, in a world of sublime archangels, like... But the, the, the angel flies, and they'll fly over those fungal sproutings. No, no, I mean, you're playing the fungal sprouting and the archangel. What world do you live in? Magical freaking Christmas land. Where do you think That's I live That's where in? he lives. <laughs> not that, 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 that. What? Da, 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 no, da, we're da. done with that. That's oh, come on! I'm bringing it back! I'm bringing da, da, it back! Da, 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 da. No, now we can't do it anymore. <laughs> Fungal Sprouting as a card in Limited is what? Good? Bad, bad? Terrible? Bad. Bad? It's fine. It's not something I really am excited about. Putting a bunch of guys in play is decent, but it's not exactly where you want, and there's a lot of evasion and flying. And There is a lot of evasion and flying, but I do like how it works really well with Exalted. Yes, it does work really well with Exalted. Play uh, this during your second main phase, so you get maximum value. Yes. Except not if you don't have any creatures in play. Sadness. Garrick Primal Hunter, not sadness. Guys, yeah. sweet. Big old beast. Woo-woo. Uh, 
I, I love this Garrick. He's my favorite of all of them because mm. drawing a bunch of cards is sweet. Yeah. I, well, I like the first one. It works well with Pro the... Tour. Like, you know, it's good. Exalted is such a good ability. It just works with every card. They should have Exalted just be all the time. I'm like, we're like, that card works with Exalted. That card works with Exalted. That card works with Exalted. It's like they're doing these things on purpose. Hmm. Mm. Mm. It's weird. But if you're drawing cards equal to the greatest power, and the power is pumped by Exalted, hmm. I think we figured something out here. Uh, what? What? It smells like confusion. All right. <laughs> Garrick's pack leader. I, I'm That's such a... I like this card too much. Why? Why no. can't, you cannot like this too much. I will draft it more than other things. I'm like, I love drawing cards. I love playing big monsters, oh. and I do it all the time. I'm telling you, it is just... The best feeling ever when you have Garrick and his buddy out there. And yeah, and he's there. Like I he's love hanging out. I just love that Garrick is in this art and he's just like chilling with his like leg up. Like when you're in that position, you are I'm going to swear now, a badass. <laughs> you're a badass. <laughs> No one puts their foot up like that and doesn't know what they're doing. You have your certificate of badassery right here, yes. and together you will destroy people with it. Yes. And that like monster this. is scary, and I would run and cower from him, but Garrick's like, yeah. <laughs> it's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> I've raised him since he was only eight feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> Knee high to a Goliath. Um, Ground Seal is an awesome reprint. Yes. Wow. This is like what cyborg cards used to look like for me. I remember a it's day true. when this is what they were. Like, you played Ground Seal, mm -hmm. and it drew you a card, and it had this minor effect, but it was good in this one spot, but if you drew too many of them, they still just can't trip you out of it. Yeah. But nowadays, like, I, I would, you know, like, compare this to a Craft Digger's Cage. Very specific answer. Cheaper, does more things. It's an old X. But... If you draw two of them, you're just dead. You, you just, just can't win with that can. Terrible. Yeah, and this card at least gives you a cantrip. It's still going to do like awesome things. It's going to protect your cards from being uh, taken out of the graveyard. It's going to eliminate your opponent from doing anything with like unbarrel rights. Mm -hmm. like, nice frights deck, ground seal. Like, hey, oh. I like that. That's my favorite deck. I know. Not Good anymore. thing they're making trade and post. Trade and post. Well, shoot. I just know that Ground Seal is terrific. It is an awesome hoser. I mean, they're trying to not ban Snapcaster Mage. They're trying real hard. Do you think that's what it is? Well, I just think it's more like, you know, they, they're just trying to keep all this crap in check. So they're trying to give you the most powerful hate cards they can, so you have I, options. I, I don't even see why they would ban anything in Standard, and I'm glad they didn't because... Once they banned Stoneforge and Jace, then people just got ban happy. They just want cards to be banned. Delver's not even that good. Deal with it, guys. No one has any imagination anymore. There's no creativity. There's no creativity. There's Everyone's zero. just playing Delver. Ollie Andrazi is playing Delver. This is <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> oh my God. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's trying. The, the That's shark the has been jumped, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Ollie Andrazi is playing Delver. Oh yeah, my God. like it's 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 just too it's too much. Like there's the deck isn't too good. People are just giving up on deck building. We need to read like that Giving up on deck building. Well, I'm mainly because the issue is just like the reason they ban Wild in the Coddle is because the friggin' there's no better option. Like, you mm -hmm. always run Delver if you're playing blue because it's one mana 3-2 flyer. Yeah. So, and Ground Seal just doesn't do much against, you know, turn one Delver, turn two Delver Ponder, and you're just like, oh my god, I'm gonna play this Ground Seal and just lose. Like, whatever. Either yeah. way, I like the card. I sweet. It's awesome that it hates just in the right way. And when you draw multiples, it doesn't suck like Graph Digger's Cage. Oh, no, yeah, I, I like this card. I, I hope I get a chance to play with it. Absolutely. Juan Vuli Beast Tracker. This card is so awesome. Oh, my God. Value? Yeah, like... Value. I just love how it pretty much says, if there's an awesome creature in your deck, and it's green, mm. you can get it. You should it's, go get that card. Yeah, it's pretty much like, like, if you don't have any targets, all your cards suck. They just suck. Like, get I mean, better cards. It doesn't even have to be green, man. Oh, like, it doesn't? No, it just says go and find a creature card. I know, that's what I was looking for. I was just like, oh, yeah, I get a green. Wait, what? Wow. Because Geist of St. Traff needs to come and hang out at the party. Like, jeez. I did not know this could, like, develop I mean, a Geist. Basically, it finds and gets all sorts of ridiculous wow. good stuff. I mean, I think it's totally sweet. I love what it. What is me Beast of a, like? From a geist. A geist is not beast like. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> you play with that guy. <laughs> Woo! Naturalize is coming back, ladies and gentlemen. And if smelt is any template, as I mentioned in the show, we got a couple more years before this is one mana. 
I don't think so. Took them about uh, seven, I think, to make, I don't know, like 12 or something for, for Shatter. Yeah, but Shatter is not as good as Naturalize. They will make the one white destroy an enchantment, and they'll make the one white red destroy an artifact. But because green has both options, they will have to make it cost two. They will never make green destroy an artifact or enchantment that without any downside. Like gaining life or nature's claimish or something. They just Did won't. you just throw out an absolute? I threw out an absolute. Wizards will not do it. It's time to it's time to bet on this. Pie in the face. What do you mean? How can you bet on never? What? What just happened here? It's a lifelong bet. Lifelong I, bet. I get to pie you in the face now. No. And if they ever do it, you no. pie me in the, the face tw two times. That you do it. All right. We're plummeting. <laughs> Plummet is sweet. I like I, it. Yeah, it's one. It's a. It's one of my favorite like green limited cards. I just like how when you don't have enough spiders, you need to deal with flyers. Green always has a problem with a flyer. So what? What's the answer? Destroy a creature. Are green red decks going to play this in sideboards for Thunder Maul Hellkite? Uh, no, they're just going to play Thunder Maul Hellkite. They're just going to play their own, aren't they? Yeah. Be bigger. Yeah. Ride the roller coaster. Go faster. You you, in a Go proactive faster. versus proactive matchup, it's very rare that you want to sideboard in reactive cards. Okay, you don't want to just like figure out who's the beat down and you both have to be the beat down. All your cards are haste and they tap each other. Good luck, beat down. It's like if he has a third of a Hellcat in play, and you play yours, it's really difficult not to just have to attack them I and hope agree. to race. So predatory rampage, as I had mentioned, was kind of sort of overrun, not exactly, but kind of sort of. Yeah, the weirdest flavor thing about this card is, if something just tripled in size, I'm not going to step towards it. Like I don't get why you're forced to. Like, why do you have to block these things? They are big, scary green monsters. They just didn't want to make Overrun rare, I guess. And so they tried to Again? Kill no. Was it rare? Overwhelming Stampede. Overwhelming Stampede. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So what was wrong with Overwhelming Stampede? I liked Overwhelming Stampede. It seemed fine. Predator Hammer just feels like a weird, not... Like, weird way to, to sort of step aside and not print Overrun or print Overwhelming yeah. Stampede. I'm, I'm not a fan of this card. It's almost like it exists just to exist. Prey Upon, however is awesome. One of my favorite. Fight is like one of the God. coolest things ever. It is a fantastic keyword. It's on one guard. I can't wait until like we're going to be old and bitter men in like 10 years, frail, or and we're going to see we're going to see a card that's prey upon exactly, but it's going to just say fight and we're like, it took wizards how many years to just make fight? <laughs> just say fight. Put fight on a card. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, prey upon is awesome. I love it. Really I, good card. Man, I, I would like to see more fighting in the core set. Yeah, this, I mean, I love just this card. It is a removal spell, but you have to use your creature to do it, and the, just calling it Prey Upon is great. Like, mm. I'm ready for the guy, I'm ready for the, the creature spell version, you know what I mean? The, when the creature mm -hmm. enters the battlefield, it fights or whatever, or, yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome, I That'd like that. That'd be sweet. Like, a, be green, cool. a green flame tongue Kavu, are you out of your mind? A green flame tongue yeah, Kavu? Yeah, a green flame tongue Kavu, a 4-2 when it enters the battlefield and fights target creature, that would be sick. Well, it, it wouldn't be you quite want flame it to tongue. die, yeah. You but you also don't want Flame Tongue just to come back because the card's nuts. The card's way, way powerful. I, I agree, but I don't think you'd. Yeah, this card can't be printed. It's just too. It, it'll either be too bad well, or too it, good. It, well, I mean, if, if you wanted it to be Flame Tongue, it would be. be a three, three. Battlefield uh, target creature fights another target creature. Oh, so you can just choose? So then you can choose. So then it's basically like Fight Bear, like the Super Oh, no. Bear. It could be a 4 2 and it could have Flash. It could be a 3-2 with Flash because it's fighting instantly to like just suddenly jumps on top of something. Yeah. yeah. Pouncing Jaguar three, two for the for win. 3-2 three. Three, for 3. Talk about a Pouncing Jaguar. Yeah. Moving on. Primal Hunt Beast is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three Hexproof guy. You play this and then you put Rancor and you're like, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do with Hexproof? Yeah. What I did there. Yeah. I mean, they are taking out, you know, Dungrove Elder and mm -hmm. uh, Thrun is going to leave us. And so... There probably is going to be some insane hexproof stuff in Ravnica. No, so, they with no wizards. We don't like it. We like to target stuff. He don't like it. I think this is sweet. I want more like it. I think guys from Saint Trap was a bridge too far because why they had to make the blue white card the best one. Thanks, yeah. but I, whatever. Of I, course, the blue white one's the best one. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do like this guy. Like just because you know he's going to untap with you next turn, like unlimited. You play him. You're going to get done tap with them. Like, mm -hmm. I just like that feeling that I know my opponent is going to kill it or bounce it so I know it can block for the turn. Like, it's just an absolute. I know that this is going to get a chance to block. It's also cool. Look, it's like the it's sort of the, the other side of a Canyon Minotaur. It's like red has a 4-mana 3-3, three, three, but green gets a 4-mana 3-3 three, three with Hexproof. Yeah, because... Way better. Yep. 
Primordial Hydra. It just keeps coming back with more heads. And then eventually it gets too big that it can't just roll over and kill you. <laughs> no, no, it actually gets so big that it does roll over you and kill That's you. That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. It can't not, yeah. It can't not because this card is sweet. I love, you know, that new players just love this type of effect. Love this card. I think for the audience that it needs to hit, it hits it perfectly. Not going to hit constructed, limited. You know, it's, it's an all-star and limited. It's freaking ridiculous. And it's just a clock. I love that it's a clock and limited. Like you, you play it and you know you have it's inevitability. Your opponent plays bad. it. He knows he has inevitability. I love the word double. Yep. And I love to see it on magic cards. <laughs> Query and Dryad. Man. This is a card that they want to do well with Ravnica. You get Shucklands, you get a bunch of multicolor cards. You get, like, if you want to try a crazy Delver deck with Rancors and a bunch of cantrips and Vapor Snag. Vapor Snag and Unsummon. I remember a day when I used to do the set review, or I'd watch the set reviews, and Evan was always like, you do all this fun stuff. Yeah, blah, blah. And blah, the other blah, person's blah. like, nope, nope. Yep. That kills that, that does this. Man, now you. All right, so look, I've been a little jaded by the Snapcaster sort of dominance lately. But, Query and Dryad. In a world of Ravnica, it's probably going to make me just as disappointed as the last time it was reprinted. <laughs> because the last time it was reprinted, I was like, oh my god! What about this time this card gets reprinted? Jesus, this card is ridiculous! Rancor is the Rancor. best thing since sliced bread. Oh my it's god! It's so good! It's Rancor, 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 Rancor. What? <laughs> my Rancors get like. Down. They All get right. down to the ground. If you want to play with Rancor, oh my god, you have to play it in the next three months. Get your infect out of your system, yeah, get, get done growth. These are all the best Rancor decks. You're oh going to regret god. not doing this if you like the Rancor effect. This like, is Rancor Summer. It is. It's Rancor Summer. Like, this is going to be an amazing summer because this guy is just going to go on top of Dungrows, go on top of Infect Creature. Jerry 20 me on turn four with Infect. Not 10 poison counters counting as a. He dealt me 20 in fact because of this card. This card is nuts. Card yeah. is sweet. I love the hell out of this thing. It is. I cannot believe they reprinted it. Like, so many times, there were so many conversations over the years where it's just like, man, you know, they should reprint Rancor. And then everyone just goes, like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> Rancor was way overpowered. That card is crazy good. And, like, here we are. And I played it in Limited, and I'm going to love playing it for more. Like, that card is oh. dirty in Limited. Oh, my God. That card is not. Ah, Rancor is so sweet. I love Rancor. Ranger's Path, yet another banner that Shocklands are coming back yes. because it's, it's said forest cards and not basic forest. That's like Explosive Vegetation, yeah. Yeah, basically. It looks sweet. Don't troll us, Watsy. Don't you do it. Love this card. Revive? Yeah. Get that get that ranker back when they uh, got all sneaky and bounced your guy. Yeah. I, okay. I, I like it just because like regrowth is like a really cool effect and revive is the fair version that we can play. Well, it's the version that doesn't make combo decks. Yeah. You know? And like regrowth was always busted because it could get any other color, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And so whenever there's any card that goes anywhere near a combo deck status, they immediately say exile it. Temporal mastery, yeah. get out of here. Uh, what was the other one? The spell twine, get out of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it even exile exiles itself. So you know, this this is the ability for Green to stay focused and just get back dooters yep. and dorks and pump spells and whatever. Planeswalkers. And planeswalkers. Prey ponds, which is nice. Roaring Parimadox. Right, this card is sweet. I, I love this. I love it. Every turn, like, it's a creature. So any creature that has this weak enter the battlefield ability. There's not many enter the battlefields in this set, though. There's not a ton, no. but there's... Battlefield, just keep giving it flying. Battlefield yeah. Eagle. Yeah, the Eagle. Hey, you could do that back in the day with Welcome Turn and something else yeah. that I'm not remembering. But anyway... Roaring Primadox is a 4-mana 4-4 four, four is awesome. And sometimes, you're just going to have to play it as a blocker. And bounce it Pick it up. Play it as a blocker. And you feel so bad. <laughs> you feel bad about it, but whatever. You still do it. <gasps> we this finally card. got to it. Sarah Spider! Oh my Actually, god. Sentinel Spider, but... Sentinel, how in the world is this common? So, I got a test by a friend. He's like, all right. 4-4, four, four, Vigilance Reach, for three colors, green, green. What is its rarity in M13? And I'm like, probably rare? They're making a 4-4 four, four Vigilance? But no, it doesn't, it doesn't have any ability. And they're like, no. I mean, it's of course an uncommon, but it probably should be a rare for how good it is in limited. Right, yeah. It's like, no, common. I'm like, what? This is a common 
up goes the table. This card this is so card? good. Wow. Talking about like they really wanted green to be good and limited. They really, yes. really, really wanted green to be good and limited. Yeah. Because my God. They didn't want the Sarah Angels to trump green anymore. Basically, Sarah Avenger is just like, what? What? This card's real? Yeah. It's, it's is crazy. so real. Oh my God. You pushed that one, Wizards. We saw what you did there. Serpent's Gift is just, I love the little, it's a green trick. Trixie. We just had like Necrobite and this one doesn't have any upside. Like, can it cantrip? I know nothing cantrips, but. Nothing needs to cantrip. You need to outplay your opponent, Brad. <sighs> Can't do that anymore. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe a couple years ago. <laughs> Riding the roller coaster, buddy. Yeah. Serpent's Bond Gift Spider. is a dorky guy with stuff, but I love Silk Lash Spider. Oh, it's sweet. It came out right when I started playing Magic. It was mm -hmm. one of the first cards that I played with. I'm so glad this is back. Like, I have a, a big bond with this card. It was in my first elf deck. Like, he has a bond with it. I do. Me, I'm going to refrain from baby got back jokes. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. Why not? Because you've done already like did four, it like four, yeah. three times, <laughs> four, whatever. Xanthagorgon and something else. No, the, the, the lions were the first one. Yeah. But that was probably the best one. Either Can way. Can we do a Bootylicious then? We could do a Bootylicious. We could. Mm. Silk Lash Spider, though, I just, this card is sweet. I love everything about it. I think the stats are perfect. I think the ability is fantastic. Yes. Super flavorful. It's huge. It kills all the flyers. Fantastic reprint. Spike Bayloth is coming to get you. This card's pretty sweet. He's going to get you. He's going to get you. And I don't know the rest of that song. I wish I did. I'd sing it with you, but I don't. It's okay. Because a white and a colorless plus Pillar Field plus Ox makes this guy yeah. a 6-6. Six, six. Jeez. Dude, what else is a 6-6 six, six trampoline? Primeval. Getting uh, out of here, though. Get out of here. I don't Spike need you Bayless in my environment. Here. Don't. Don't yeah. set some lands with on the modern. With Exalted, this guy's sweet. Like, oh, sweet. 5-3 Exalted. Yeah, he also is oh. just a tr just having Trample like means you can like get some extra damage in. They're going to have to trade with him with something mm -hmm. that costs around that. He's a great card. Yeah, things like Kraken Hatchling can't block him. Mm -hmm. It's all good, man. But this guy. <sighs> Dear God, what's he? Why did you not just... Why couldn't you just put Trample on him just so we could dig him up with our... our oh, yeah. Our Monvuli Beast Tracker thing? Yeah, but anyway, this oh. guy is absurd. Jeez, the second best card in the set. The Why does it have... Completely yeah. and ridiculous. I, I don't even know how to say it. I mean, like, they got really drunk, and they're just like, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to make the most insane inner and leave the battlefield triggers we've ever done, ever. Yeah. Like, since Revelark, I haven't seen a creature I was just like it does what mm -hmm. like when it leaves and enters play what it value 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 it race it starts a race off with the gain five so it's harder for your opponent to kill you it starts attacking then they have they, they don't want to trade with it because then they just give you another three three like it's so good it's very good against Delver and it's you know it's, it's worded in a very specific way it's just worded like Revelark arc is mm -hmm. it's like when it leaves the battlefield when it enters the battlefield. So you can't, like, you know, do a Swords to Plowshares-esque effect. You can't exile it. You can't, you know, put it on the bottom of the library with a Condemn and not steal, see them get crazy value All out the value of out of it. Oh, my God. Five life for a 3-3. Three, three. Like, just think about it, like, if it was just a 3-3 three, three for five that when it came into play gained you five life, that would uh, see some play. Not a lot, but it would see some. But, it, like, it has a second life. It's so good. Like, I'm this, just glad this card it's is gross. not mythic because it would be insanely expensive. Yeah. The card is nut, nuts, 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 grid. And I want Timber Pack Wolf to have the Relentless Rats ability. Come on. W One time, Wizards. You want to make a better Relentless Rats? Yes. Let's build a better Relentless Rats because you know there's going to be one guy every FNM who plays that deck. He would play yeah. the thir you know the sixteen lands, you know thirty six or whatever, or forty six timber pack wolves, and just go and just dork Whee. and dork three and dork four fours and dork five fives, and then you'd be like wrath, and they'd be like, all right, dork dork go, and you know they're out of cards. I think a two, I think that card would be too good. Make it a one two, okay, and yeah. relentless rats ability. It would still be too good <sighs> because you curve out four four of them, so you triple anthem. Yep. On turn four, so you have four of them by turn four. Okay. I think that's too good. All right, so if they were one ones, can it work as a one one? Maybe. I'm telling I'd you. I'd have man. to do the math. This when game, when what what is the alpha strike like? I when don't know do the alpha strike. But my point is, this that type of deck would appeal to a just fantastically casual 
fun player, yeah. enjoying themselves, and it just like I mean, someone's going to run actually it. for like a year. Wouldn't it kind of be cool if like there was a Relentless Rats constructed deck that people played? You like, know what I mean? They don't draw the Day of Judgment, and you're just like Wolf, 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 Wolf. Ah. Lightning Bolt Surgical. Ah. <laughs> Isn't that what that'd be cool? Like with Surgical Extraction in the environment, like you're really going to get them. Yeah. I mean, really going to get them. Yeah. Like, woo. Dude, like what's that pile? Oh, that's the remove from game. What? What? Huge pile of stuff. Titanic growth is monstrous. He looks like the wolf from that. He does. He got wolfy. Yeah. Ah. Titanic growth, I like it. I like that plus four plus four is a, a huge... Uh, pump and it's better than having like a giant growth effect or something. I, I, I like having a plus four plus four every once in a while. I wouldn't have minded if giant growth had came back. I like giant growth. They're both practically the same. Giant growth is better. Giant growth is normally better. Yeah, well, one mana. It's cheaper. Well, yeah, it's, ju- but it's cheaper. Titanic growth is sweet. Vastwood gorger. It's gorging on the vastwoods. So now they're just big old, big old fatty boom booms. Make fatty McBoom booms. It does what it does, but you don't always want to play. It does the stuff, but this card. Wow. The art is beautiful. It's it's such a cool effect. Yeva is just awesome with the flash and wait, the wait, other. Wait. Is it Yeva or Yeva? Ye- I don't I know. have to say this Yeva. card's name for like the next year or two, Yeva, so I need to know. Yeva Natro's I think it's Herald. Yeva. The wrong and fastest on the wrong slab. So I love the I love the bear next to her. I don't know, like I just like it. Is it a bear? Yeah, it's oh, like it a is. sweet wow. bear. I mean, just like four mana, four four flash, and all the green creatures, also known as hunt masters, get flash. Like <laughs> it just sweet, just wow. Yeah, I, I think this card might see some play. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's terrific design, terrific, yep. really. Like even if it never hits constructed, I don't care. I'm gonna love it in limited. I'm gonna love it in casual decks. I'm gonna love seeing yeah. it in every commander deck that has anything green in it. Like yeah, that's the problem with constructors. Like when do you get got by a flash creature? Like. You don't Never. really get got, but like it's just you know. I mean, obviously, when you pass with four man up in your green deck, they're going to know what's going on. Like, oh, you didn't play a hunt master. I guess you have Yeva, right? Like, yeah, Yob. But you know, when you play your uh, Cavern of Souls and you name Elf, you know, mm-hmm. like they're going to know, and that's yeah. okay because I think the card's awesome. It's pretty sweet. And there's her Force Mage. I did not awesome. think I'd like this card, but it was awesome. I thought it was a you little underpowered, but it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, man, that's sweet. It just it, it starts the race. I didn't know how fast format was, so when I built my deck, I didn't know it was like a racing format, like the last three. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like every format before that now? Yeah. Like, oh, it's Except for M11. M11 was the last time it wasn't like mono racing. Oh, yeah, M11, yeah. Yep. But even then, like, wasn't that the, the format I was trying to talk about earlier with the silver coats and the green? No, that, that was M12. That was M12. M12 was all about the 2-2s two and the 1-1s. Really? Yeah. All right. Um, but the Force Mage is yeah. sweet. Value, value. Yep. It comes in. It gives another creature a benefit uh, to get a good attack in on turn two. Like, starts the race for a green deck so the green deck doesn't have to worry later in the game mm-hmm. when they're flying over and they're chump blocking and stuff. You can, like, just make them have to chump earlier. So I do like this card. It might not always see uh, main deck play, but you will want to bore this in to lower your curve and be a little bit more aggressive. Hmm. Huh. Fair enough. And now, the man himself, Nico Bolas. The big old dragon that talks. Sweet. I mean, it's fun to me to go back. Uh, oh, can we bring back the Sean Connery? No. Uh-huh. Sorry. But it's fun to me to go and look at sort of the branding that they used for M12 and how it was all about the Planeswalkers. It was all yep. about bringing back Gideon because Gideon was kind of like the star. And but for this one, it's just like the horns are everywhere mm-hmm. because it's so cool and unique. I mean, I think they really latched on to the fact that like nothing in fantasy art has the horns and that that sort of glowing yeah. orb in the middle. Like nothing does. Mm-hmm. So they're just like using it like nobody's business. I, for some reason, I, there isn't quite as big a fanfare as I sort of expected there to be for a multicolor card in a core set. I, I really think at this point, you know, they were Is just like. Is this the first time? First time ever. Oh wow. And yeah, and I think people are just like, eh, it's about time, you know. And I'm yeah, like, that's the best you got, really. I that's mean, I I understand that magic, new magic players are coming into the game, and that's like the 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 selling point for the core set. But magic is everywhere, and they have, they now have like duels of the planeswalkers to help bring those 
players in and teach them the stuff. So I don't really mind course that's getting a little more sophisticated. I agree, and I think, and that's sort of what they're doing, as I yeah. understand it, based on you know me reading for for Marrow's article. Wizards just basically figured out like, oh, BT Dubs, like Duels of the Planeswalkers, actually just teaches the world magic. Yep. And let's make these course sets really interesting because they already know how to play. Mm -hmm. So I think there's less sort of like dumbed down. There's less vanilla. And there's more of like, you know, Battle of Wits, you know, Omniscience, mm -hmm. whatever, like cards that just like change rules and do crazy stuff. And, you know, there's like if a duels huge... duels takes that over, do you think like just the core set is just going to go away? No, no, absolutely no, not. No, duels, duels will always be sort of a component for me. Yep. It's also going to replace Magic Online one of these days, but that's probably years what? down the road. Oh, yeah. One of these days. Can you imagine a worldwide pre-release on Xbox and PS3 and iPad, like... But it, will it still be as sophisticated? Like, will I mean, you'll have deck play? building tools, and it'll just your battlefield will look like it duels does now. You'll have a timer, so it's not like you have, you can sit there and run down the clock, and that's just what it's going to. Sorry, buddy. But anyway, no, no, dash hopes and dreams. The person who grew up with a terrible program over here. Um, a Chroma's Memorial is next. Mm. Quick note on Nicol Bolas. A, I think he's probably going to see constructive play because he's too good and too powerful and too many people like him not to. Um, uh, two, I think he's just crazy good and limited, but you really kind of need a Gilded Lotus. Um, and third, I think Brad Nelson's wrong. I really do. The Chroma's okay. Memorial, reprinted. Thank you, Wizards. Love this card. My God, it was going on 15 bucks, man. Did you know that? Really? Wow. Just because there just weren't any. Because like Future Sight came out and like every casual got theirs and more casuals entered the realm to play commanders mm -hmm. and stuff. And they're like, where's a Chroma's Memorial? Like, well, it's the only copy we got, 15 bucks. That's like, crazy. So I mean, the prices went down and everyone gets a sweet card back. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely like that. And it's, it's just a sweet card. I love that in Limited it's just like the super powerful all-star. Like, I played with it a couple oh times. God. It's just so good. Talk about a seven drop you want to play. Yeah, it <laughs> might. I, I could see it hitting constructive playability if you if you can get to the mana. Like, it seems really good in, like, some kind of beat-down mirrors mm -hmm. uh, with the mana ones. Like, green-white like, with all the mana doors. Yeah, you get stuff. all the mana guys. You flood out, you play it. All your guys get big. They're indestructible or whatever. You're not indestructible, but you get all the abilities and stuff. No rest. So. No mercy. No matter what. You go pray to this and you just start floating. I wish that I got to go to a temple where I just started floating. Shaw, Chronomaton. Oh, he's croning it. I thought this card was terrible. And then I saw it played and it was like awesome. Like you play it in the early game. Oh, like turn one? You play it turn one, turn two, turn three. It like trades with a guy or just starts getting bigger and like every turn that goes by, like right away it can start trading, but if they don't attack into it, now they can't get in past them. And yeah. So they just like. They throw away their decent guy just to make sure he doesn't get bigger. And that's fine with you because you're a green deck and all your guys are huge anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's beautiful because, like, once it's, like, an untapped 3-3, three, three, you know, you just, like, cannot attack with it, you know, with anything less than a 5-5. Five, five. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's just going to be trading. Yep. So you literally just trade, like, your awesome 4-4 four, four for this 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that you invested mana every turn into it. Like, it's not the greatest card fine. in the world, but it's, it's, it's very interesting. I like it. Yeah, well, it just it has a, a different aspect. Yep which is terrific. Uh, Clock of Omens. You guys tell me what I'm going to do with this later. I'm not going Johnny's to trade post it. are going to do you and that trading post. Johnny's are going to do the stuff with the cards to make the crazy combos work, but like, it's been powered down or you know, basically what I would describe as insulated. Mm -hmm. Like They haven't put anything in the environment, certainly in the past X years, that is going to get anywhere close to breaking this card. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. And they don't want it to. And even if it does, it's a four-mana artifact. Like, you got turns you have to build up to actually play it, and then get other things in play before you can start doing all your craziness, which is fine. Door to nothing, this... <laughs> <laughs> what? I, li I like the huge, like, funnel of, like, death stuff... University. That is, that is really cool art. I think my Sweet favorite, art. my favorite thing about M13 was an Ali Trazi tweet, where he says, "Oh my God, they're reprinting Door to Nothingness and Battlewits." Well, I'm not winning any more matches in Standard. <laughs> <laughs> As he plays Delver. Yeah. So 
Yeah, door to nothingness is, is much like for me, you know, the Battle of Wits and, and uh, Rosewater. I mentioned mm-hmm. it, you know, like new players to the game, these cards like just blow their mind. Like these are. Because like, you just wait. But what? He's at 17 and I can kill him? Yeah, 10 mana I win? Just 10 mana I win. Well, and that's their goal now. Instead of trying to kill them, that's their goal to accomplish is to do this. And like. Yep. And it's funny that it actually has its own like safety valve. It has to come into play. Mm-hmm. At. So n- you so can't you infinite can't, mana, right? You can't infinite. You know mana, what you like, can do? Combo kill you. you know what you can do? Uh, you can clock a bomb and say, "Clock a bomb and Tap your signals and enter the plow and kill you. All right, elixir of immortality. I love that it's coming back. It's such a good card. I'm sad that we're getting rid of trinket mage. Keep that. No one's done anything with trinket mage for years. No, not no, no, not years. It's been a while, but not years. It's like, awesome play. It did. Look it up. Just don't give me the no. No look of disapproval. Stop it. Stop it. Elixir of Immortality and Trinket Mage was a thing, and it was sweet. All right. Gem of Becoming. It's, it I blew my mind they made this card and they didn't make a cycle for it, but then I didn't realize with the horns it was just. It turns out that's what that little thing was. Yeah. I thought it was a potato. <laughs> but it could be delicious. Uh, it can be deep fried. Um, man, you have some of that nickel bowls potato. Like, whoa, that's good stuff. I'm sorry, I'm just running on it. I mean, it's, I was gonna run on too, but you went there. I was gonna go with the like nickel bowls puts his head and he's like, does this make me fat? No, it makes you look becoming. Oh my God! It <laughs> finds lands. Let's move on. Gilded Lotus. Is no, you know what awesome this card reprint. does. Do you what know does what Gem do? Becoming does? What does it do? You open Nickel Bowls, Planeswalker, and Limited, yep. and you need to find the gem, because if not, you're not going to cast it, because like, the game itself breaks in Limited. You can't get to eight mana and play it and not die to what they're doing, so this card generates all the cards you need to get there. It generates all the things for six mana yes. total. Gilded Lotus is sweet, though. It's very sweet. Oh, I love I've this always, card. Yeah, I've loved this card forever. Like, Just a big old, adds mana every turn. Like find some cool thing to do with it, like are we Grand Architecting, are we comboing out with Deadeye Navigator, what? and uh, the Pestermite guy. Yeah, I thought Gilded Lotus was going to be a mythic rare, I actually really did, I was surprised it wasn't, because I thought it was like a, it's an iconic card, mm-hmm. it's a powerful card, people love this card, it's got the Everyone Lotus wants on one, it. though. They, do, like, they do what they need for their players, and they love their casual players, their commander players, and everyone needs one of these. Here's a rare. Yeah, they want to get them to you. Get yours. Jam Day Tome. What? Why? Why not? It's a classic card. It's a terrible card, but that's only, but it's only terrible because we've been living with magic for like 18 years or whatever yeah. it is now. Like, you know, yes, we know now that if you put eight mana into your first card, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. But in the world of sealed, it's a fine card. Yeah. In the world of draft, probably not because it's a little slow. But these cards didn't exist. And again, it's another sort of it's a teacher card, right? Mm-hmm. It used to be actually interesting, actually good. What? Way back when, when you were little. Um, but a long time I ago. was never little. <laughs> J.M. Daytome. Kite sells sweet. Love this card. Right, I, it's cool. Love equipment like this. Like It can go, it can be a defensive card, it can be an offensive card. It's great in any non-flying type type. Uh, Decks. It's even good in flying type decks when you need to make sure that all your guys have flying. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, t- four mana is a lot to invest, but it's worth it. It's good. It still yeah. gives a, a, a power bonus as yeah. well. Yeah, I've always liked this card. I was super happy to see it come back. It's a cool card. It's a lot of people I think underestimate it or won't play it because it like doesn't do enough or whatever. Oh, it does a lot. I'm like, man, when you got a lot of fatty boom booms like a basswood gorger mm-hmm. or whatever, man. You got to get that thing in the air. Not really. Yeah, you do. You just got to crash. Wow. Oh, they printed Frexing Hook? They did. Six mana, five, four. Ba- ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a vanilla card. It's very vanilla. It's a text. So vanilla It blocks. Mm. It costs six mana to get into play. It's one power away from a Craw Worm that is not in this set. That is true. They decided no Craw Worms for you. Primal Clay. Westward Gorge. I, That's primal. This card's awesome. The card is sweet. I, just, I love this card. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's fun. You don't know what you really need. Like, it's a hill giant in any color deck. It's a flyer in any color deck. Mm-hmm. And it's a wall in any color deck. It's just great. Like, it can be anything. It's so versatile. Now, in sealed, I think you're always going to play it. But in draft, is the format too fast? I actually think it's, you'll play this card in draft more than you will in sealed. Because hmm. you're just like, 
putting an artifact in your deck that you don't need, that opponents are like, yeah, I'll play this naturalized because I have 22 cards and I might hit some stuff. Hmm. Like, yeah, I, I actually would not want to play that. Like, sometimes it's versatile, but if I don't need to, I probably won't play it. It's, it's a good card. Yeah. But if I don't need the effects, right. I won't. But in, like, limited, it's more of, or in draft, it's more of things that you might need. Gotcha. Well, I don't. I, I do agree that I think um, you know it's certainly super playable and limited in all forms. And I think, as I recall, the last time this was printed, I used a lot of the two-two flyer option. Oh, it, this is almost always a two-two flyer because yeah. a, a hill giant is not as powerful as a two-two flyer for four. Yeah, it just isn't. No, nope. you need the evasion. So here we begin our here we rings. Start the rings. Oh, the rings. We'll start with Evos Isle, which gets a plus one plus one counter if it's blue. And, and, it and it gives hex proof. Yep. Moving on, boring. Let's get to what? the sweet ones. Fine. Best one. Here's the green one. It gives trample. trample. Plus one. Boring. Yeah. Fine. Here's Ring of Thune. This one is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my it life. It's gorgeous. But yeah, it's that amazing. Terrific. Like they Who were just like, it? you know, can you make Erica Yang? I approve. Yeah. You did well. They're just like, can you make like a ring and like maybe in the background like something's happening, just whatever. And she's just like, ha, ha, ha. challenge accepted. And it yeah. was like amazing, ridiculous landscape. Yeah, it's of forever. It's gorgeous, terrific. Ring of Valkus. This isn't a ring that I can get behind. I love the effect of giving haste. It's one that you might even board in or play without being red. Really? Haste is pretty good. Well, I mean, you only get the counter if it's red, though. Yeah, but the haste is what I'm, what I'm looking at. I mean, are we really talking about, like, swift foot boots without the hex proof or something? Really? I'm not saying it's great, but I'm saying the other ones you... Mo in limited, oh. I can see it. And I don't even think, like, the other ones are even playable in those colors. Like, I don't even want them. Their effects aren't that good. But this is, like, the second mm -hmm. best ring. The blue one's okay in limited, isn't it? Not really. It's not great. It's it, just, it, it, Shroud isn't even that good. You don't target that often. You're just like windmill slam and hitting each other. Like sure, Shroud's fine, but well, you have to hold proof. mana for it. Or hex, that's fine, but you have to hold up mana for it instead of just giving it to him. Yeah, you what? have to pay two mana to get it. Oh, never mind. The card <laughs> is terrible. But the best ring, ring, the one that rules them all, Zathrid. Yes, uh, the black one. Re yes, regenerate. And making two. giant scorpions bigger than one threes, and it's so good. Like for two colorless regenerate. Yeah, it, regeneration's by far the best of them. Pumping the, making black creatures bigger is really good. Like and rare. And it's scary. Like the bigger like a black creature. I mean, not only does it pump, but it regenerates. So like it, it blanks so much removal on the set. Yeah. And then if they pass by the guy, they're like, all right, I'll start building up this guy. That's like sweet. yeah, I, th I think this card is by far the best one, and it's the only one I was even remotely scared of when I played against it. Well, this is the one like I just really appreciate the fact that they didn't bring back you know Iron Star or Demon Horn or whatever. Yeah, the Lucky Charm things like these are way more interesting, and I am way more excited to see yeah. cycles like this than I am seeing more of those dumb charms. However. People love those things. People love those things. You can't, you know, fight against it just because you want to fight against it. Like, yeah. because, because we're jaded and we've seen every magic card for the past whatever mm -hmm. doesn't mean that, you know, they shouldn't make those cards yep. because people like them. Uh, Sands of Delirium. Scary card. Scary, scary. Infinite mana. Scary yeah, card. Yeah, infinite mana just got its go-to thing forever. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I'll deck you. Yeah, infinite sure. Sands you. Infinite Sands you. Like... Yeah. Card is really, really powerful. Very good and limited for like the slow, grindy games. Like you can just board this in against like a control deck and just alternate win condition. Should I put it in my cube? No. No. I don't think so. Too slow. I think it's too slow. I think mm. it's like a good sideboard card. Like, and I don't think you really want to put cards in a cube that are just like strictly for like really fringe scenario situations. Well, fringe scenarios and also just like a really kind of cheesy way to win. You know what I mean? Like you play like a blue white sort of controly walls deck. You know? Yeah, it's not fun. You're gaining life and drawing cards, and finally you're just like, okay, I've taken care of everything. You don't, I'm going to mill you today. Yeah, you don't like, cube for a title. You cube for your enjoyment. And like yeah. million someone with this doesn't seem that fun. I mean, it, I'm sure it does to some players, but in a sort of very competitive space, it's not a very competitive no. way to sort of show your, no. you know, skill. Staff of Nin. <laughs> All I think about is like, 
walk tall and carry a big stick. Yeah. Is this, like, this card is awesome and limited. Like Trent Reznor's microphone stand? Yeah. I saw that one on Twitter. That's pretty funny. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Is that what it looks like? Well, Staff of Nin, as in... Nine Inch Nins. Oh, wow. Ah, ah. Woo! It's been a long day. It took a while, but <laughs> the uptake was there. Uh, it's just, and limited just seems really good. And yeah. sealed. Whoa. I saw this in uh, Glen Jones Sealed, and it was like dirty. It was just like, kill that, I'll draw an extra card, kill that. You can't like, play any of his creatures anymore. Oh, it's my like, God. Card is completely busted and limited. Yep. And uh, just Phyrexian Arena. Ugh. Yeah, and just drawing an extra card Arena is so stupid. Don't hurt you. Stuffy Doll is sweet. The I why did they have to change the art? But it is way cooler. But I did it's like the way old art. Creepier now. Yeah, it's very creepy. The first art was too like plushy. It yeah, was, it was too you know goody goody almost. Yeah, this card's scary. I want Stuffy Doll to look like that. Like he's pissed off and he's like you know gonna hurt himself the, and hurt you. The goal of M13 thir for me is to turn to slag my Stuffy Doll. I just really want to do that <laughs> real bad. <laughs> I have to turn to slag my Stuffy Doll <laughs> to do things to that card. Tormod's Crypt is next. Just the perfect card. I think, like, Nihil Spellbomb's a little bit too slow for the non-black decks. Like, they don't want to invest a mana into it. Like, yeah. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Like, okay. it's just too much mana. We have been so spoiled. Like, Well, I'm saying for, like, the zombie mirrors, like, or, like, if you wanted the card to come in for certain matchups, like... I do just like that this just causes zero mana to have the effect to take a graveyard out, so when you want that. Plus, there's aggressive graveyard-based decks like zombies, so I, I just like that you can fight them on the front of not getting tempoed out by starting to invest into your spells, as well as you don't have to pay life for the surgicals, and you can just get the ability whenever. So, I love it. I think it's, it's a nice sort of uh, stopgap to the format. They've been putting more of these. They have ground seal in mm -hmm. here. They have this. And they made Graph Digger's Cage, which people were just like, oh, gee, Graph Digger's Cage, like, holy cow. And I'll admit I was one of them. But it um, doesn't mean that they were right yep. or that I was right. But what I think it means is that, you know, they were like, okay, Innistrad happens, Graveyard Shenanigans, Dark Ascension, Avacyn Restored. Okay, guys, like, here's the official, like, actual stopgap. Not yep. like Graph Digger's Cage silliness, but like Tormod Script, Zero Mana, get you. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, should solve a lot of problems. Helps with Undying. Comes into play right away. You oh can God. also play one drop. With Take what, it card are we, what card are we on? Take What's, it what, what, what was that? A trading post? It's a trading post. Okay. So this is my favorite card in the set by far. I don't even get why no one else is excited about this. Everyone's just comparing it to that stupid... What's that last set? I don't even know what it's called. It's Mike Flores' big card. Every card ever? I don't know. Go ahead. No, the three mana that puts a guy... Oh, the satchel? The, the satchel, the yeah, druidic people are satchel. To satchel. And, Ugh. like, this card is awesome. I understand it doesn't kill a person. I understand it can't win a game on its own. But it generates a bunch of different abilities and card advantage, and you just get to do a bunch of random stuff with it that, alongside it with a different strategy, I feel is just great. Like, it works well with a Tezzeret attack. You want to play all these different artifacts in a Tezzeret attack. It does certain things. Gaining four life a turn is actually a lot of life. It is a lot of life. What, what, what I, the, a couple issues with, with this card for me. A, it should have been a land. No, yes. too powerful. It could have been too powerful. However, the reason that they said they didn't make it a land was because there would have been too many words. Sure. They couldn't put, they, they always want to make sure lands tap for mana. It couldn't tap for mana and have all these God, abilities. if all these abilities end tap for colorless was a card, oh my God. It'd been insane. However, as it is a four mana artifact, I don't think it's quite as insane. However, what I do like is that all the abilities work together. Yes. You can discard an artifact to gain four life, then you can pay one of those lives to get a creature token. You can sacrifice that creature token to return the artifact back, and then you can sacrifice the artifact to draw a card. Mm -hmm. they, they, they work in tandem and they work together. Yes. I, I enjoy the fact that there is a almost infinite possibilities here and that this card basically enables them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's sweet. So I love the flexibility of it. I just don't think it's very powerful in terms of like certainly constructed worthy. Well, the one thing, the, the, the thing that makes me very happy about this card mm -hmm. is, so Warm Coil Engine is one of the most powerful creatures in Standard. True. Just like probably the most powerful creature. Pound for pound? Yeah. And it can't beat the Zealous Conscript or the Vapor Snake Test. Mm -hmm. And this card helps break that. 
I agree. And that's like a huge reason that I love this card. What I like about this card the most is what excites me about this card is that Grand Architect works perfectly with it. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. However, and it also it also can cycle itself, which yep. is also nice. Um, the flavor thing really gets me, but what I'm also flavor thing? just the f it's a trading post that's an artifact. What does that even mean? It's a, it's a <laughs> place. They should have called it something. It feels like they were just sort of like shoehorn. They're like, yeah. oh well, we can't make it a land, even though it sounds like a land and looks like a land. But let's just make it an artifact. So I was it for makes it. sense. Yeah, I've just been burned by like four man artifacts before, or or more, and it's just I just don't think I think it's just too slow. In you know right now, and if you, when you're telling me all about all these haste creatures and Rancor and Delver and you know like where does a four mana artifact that takes another mana to do anything actually come into play? Uh, I I like it. You'll just have to. I'm just gonna have to trust you. You're gonna have to trust me, and I'm gonna win I and open with it. Fine, Cathedral of War. Sweet. I don't like it. It comes to play Taz. That's boring. <laughs> I don't like it. Well, I mean, they gave it to Flores. You don't just give, like, a card to Flores that's, like, bad. I don't think it's going to see much play. Coming into play tapped is really bad. Not producing the colored mana with, like, all these, like, super mana-intensive spells is really bad. Come on, it's like Geist. Like, what what, what are you going to play this in? Like, what kind of deck? It's probably going to be a monocolored deck. Like, what we need it? Red. Red? Red or black. I don't know. Look, I'm just telling I don't you. I like it. I know sometimes they give Flores Scour Glass, and sometimes they give him Noble Hierarch, but like Cathedral of War is powerful. Psh. Yeah. yeah, right along with your trading post, buddy. <laughs> Dragon Skull Summit. What do you think about the cycle? Cycles I love came back. that the cycle is back to go alongside Dual Lands, Shock yeah. Lands. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it should work perfectly. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I agree. And I, I mean, you know, and some can sort of lament the fact that this has been like reprinted infinite times and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. like, you know, the fact that you have these these lands here, they don't hurt you. New players hated it when, you know, their lands the pain hurt. Pain lands, them. yep. Pain lands just don't make any sense to a new player. Mm -hmm. They're like, why is this hurting me? Why wouldn't I just run a swamp or a, you know, or a, a mountain instead of the Sulfurous Springs? You know, it just yep. doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I appreciate that. They'll work great with Ravnica Shock lands. Yep. Evolving Wilds it. is back. I love having Evolving Wilds Terramorphic in, in a set. It's just great. Uh, I like color fixing. What else can you say about Core an Evolving Wilds? <laughs> bread and buttery goodness. Hellion Crucible. Two thumbs up. This is such a cool land. It's a cool land. It is great. Like I love red decks that have somewhere to filter extra mana, so you're working to something. Yep. Like Once it's charged up, your opponent really can't tap out because it's four damage. Like. It's also haste, so if they ever play a creature, you can play and attack. Like, I think this land will be good. I hope red decks are good. I think this gives them the chance to be there because all the other colors are so sick. That this is it. This is a step in a direction that will make red decks better. I want this land to be good, and I was like completely flipping out over how good it was until I read and sacrifice it, and I was just like. Remove two pressure counters from it and sacrifice it. And I was just like, what? Like, Yeah, you didn't know it had to second itself? Well, yeah, I mean, after I read it again. But the first time I read it, I was like, holy cow, I can just put two counters, remove two counters, make a guy? No. Put counters, put counters, move two counters, make a guy? They're pressure counters. You build the pressure until it explodes into a hellion. <laughs> that, there's but no like, land left. Well, I also thought that like it didn't sacrifice it, but you had to sacrifice the token at the end of turn. Oh, that'd be way worse. No, you get well, the token. I guess, but like what I'm saying is like it would also let you use the land over and over again. Yeah. That way, you like you have an explosion. Hellion comes out and dies, and then you have an explosion. Hellion comes out and sure. dies. That's where I was expressing. I was I was sort of the way I read it. Yeah. And I think at that it was a lot more playable than it is right now, which is almost unplayable to me. Seems, it seems like a thing for a red deck to do, but not really. That's crazy. That's Fine. totally playable. Reliquary Tower. So they just needed to print a lot more of these for the new commander players. Is that what Basically, it is? Basically, like they just need foils, to dump them out. Foils were getting ridiculous. Like how much? Like fifteen, twenty dollars. Wow, it was ridiculous. Like just because you know, conflux, uncommon yeah. foil, like whatever. So it's it's a great card. Casuals love this card. They get totally attached to it. Um, the last card I wanted to touch on um, was is the new planes. 
there's like 234 or whatever it is. We'll put mm -hmm. it up on the on the screen. But it is incredibly gorgeous. It is beautiful. And foils of that card will be worth some silly amount at some point. I actually haven't seen this yet, so I really need to see it. You will see it. It will be on the screen behind us. Oh, you'll be like, Whoa. that's beautiful. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, man. Those cards are sweet. So, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We got there. Bad jokes. Horrible puns. I don't say bad jokes. Awkward or moments. Horrible puns. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we have made it all the way from card one to card 227. <laughs> and I think we just covered 228 with that planes. But we're here. We Ladies got and there. gentlemen, we appreciate you hanging out with me. Thank you. Brad Nelson. Without you, I would be on the street corner trying to Raving. find money. Yeah. Can, I, can, I have a, can I have a dollar? No, you can't. Good. But what you guys can have is a fantastic time playing M13. I think it's a totally sweet set. I think it's way better than M12. Oh, oh miles. This is the, probably the best oh. course that I've ever seen. I mean, since M10, I haven't been as impressed. Like, yeah, no. all the pieces work. The returning mechanics are perfect. The cards that they reprinted flavor. are terrific. Ugh. Oh, it's just, I mean, the flavor text to, to, you know, the art, to the naming, to everything. There's no craziness yeah, going on. Yeah, I really like this set. Terrific. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining us. For Evan Irwin and Brad Nelson. We're tapping the cards. So you don't have to. Good night, everybody. like the fatties.